There was one person unambiguously celebrating last night, one leader, and that was Bob Brown. Let's hear from him. Looks like we'll have nine senators in the uh, new parliament, a party room of ten. From where I sit, that's a green slide. And um, we are in this uh, to make this nation much happier, uh, much more loving. A couple of days ago, a baby whale was born in the Derwent for the first time in 200 years. Uh, two days later, we're seeing the uh, real birth of a new political movement which is headed to much greater things in the future. 11.4 primary vote uh, in the House of Representatives. We're joined now by Senator Sarah Hanson-Young, a Green Senator from South Australia. Clearly can't, can't wait to get started. She's in Canberra this morning. Uh, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Barry. Thanks for having me. Could you just confirm for us then that will be nine senators and, and uh, one member in the House of Representatives? And uh, can you give us a sense of why I think that happened? Look, that's, that's right. We've looks like we've doubled our representation from five in the Senate to now ten overall with, of course, Adam Bant in the seat of Melbourne. And we've uh, broken records as a minor party for national votes, both in the House of Reps and in the Senate, just touching on 13% uh, for a national Senate vote, which is outstanding for the Greens. And, uh, of course, the reasons why is because people have um, really given up with the spin and broken promises of both major parties and really wanted something positive. The Greens went into this campaign saying we, we want to take action on climate change, we want a price on pollution, we want a denticare scheme, we want to re remove discrimination in the Marriage Act and of course we really broadened our support from not just in the city but across the country and uh, really picked up some good support in those regional areas and in the bush. But when you say both major parties it's the political reality isn't it that you can take support only from Labor? Look, when you look across the board as to, to where our uh, significant numbers come from, of course in the seat of Melbourne um, we've taken that seat from the Labor Party. But in terms of the Senate vote, uh, there's, a, there's a good lot of votes coming from the coalition there, straight to the Greens, particularly from the Nationals who have really given up on country people, turned their back on the bush. We see that with the uh, independents in the, in the House of Reps who have left the, the National Party. And in the Senate, uh, this, the National Party hardly uh, have hit 4% and yet the Greens are on 13. Andrew? Well, it strikes me that uh, the Greens have uh, maintained their, their uh, attraction by striking e extreme positions and not modifying them, by staying pure. You opposed the emissions trading scheme of the government in the first term. Uh, I don't think this result means that any emissions trading scheme or carbon price can be struck in the next uh, three years. That's six years of no action on a thing that you think is endangering the world, and that's thanks to the Greens. Oh, look, uh, Andrew, and I'm, I'm sure you wouldn't want us to take any action on climate change because you clearly That's don't true. believe in it. But the, 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 around the country, as I've been travelling around on the campaign trail, as, as Senator Bob Brown has, and even yesterday in the polling booths, people are saying we need a price on carbon. We're disappointed that Labor turned their back on it, and we really wanted to see, whether it's in the city or in the bush, uh, that price signal so that we can start to drive investment but in the clean green energy. you're not going to get it now. Energy... Look, you're not going to get it now. The Greens will continue to work. The Greens will work with whoever wins government. And of course, Adam Bant has said straight up front that uh, he won't be enlisting an Abbott government. No, but it's either an However, Abbott government... It excuse out... me, but it's either an Abbott government or it's a Gillard government, depending on independence, including Bob Catter, a climate sceptic. That means six years of inaction if this government goes full term because you didn't agree to an emissions trading scheme. Well, of course, we could, we could go back over the old ground of, of why the Greens couldn't support the CPRS, but we all know that the Greens have the track record on uh, wanting action on climate change. We're the only ones putting forward a credible policy. People have reacted to that around the country, and they really want to see the Greens in the Senate working responsibly, using our sensible and experienced leadership of Senator Bob Brown, who hasn't just walked in the door yesterday, has actually led our party to victory, and uh, it's testament to the experience experience of Bob Brown on these issues like climate change, on health, health reform, denticare and of course one of the big sleeping issues right up until uh, the last couple of weeks was this issue of removing discrimination in the Marriage Act. That came through really long 
and cla allowed throughout the, the last couple of weeks, and it's something the Greens will, will push for hard. Annabelle. Senator Hanson Young, it's Annabelle Crabb speaking. First Hi, of all, Annabelle. congratulations on your strong Thank result. You. Um, now, I think that directory assistance at the moment is probably jammed with calls from people trying to find Andrew Wilkie's phone number. Um, he's a former candidate for the Greens and now is an independent who looks like picking up uh, Denison in Tasmania. Can you tell us, please, what the current state of your party's relationship with Andrew Wilkie is? Look, we're, we're in uh, communication with Andrew Wilkie and of course he, if he is to be elected and we're not quite sure whether that will, will end up happening, it will be on the back of Green's preferences in that seat. So we may see not just uh, Adam Bant as a Green in the House of Reps but also a Green independent through Andrew Wilkie if, that, uh, if he's able to, to hold that spot. I think that's a really positive result for democracy. I think it's a really positive result for and a vote of confidence for Green's principles, Green's policies and of course Andrew Wilkie is in line with, with the Greens on many of these issues whether it be on climate change or a more compassionate Australia. So, so you've talked to him and you would expect to have some sort of agreement to negotiate on block with An Andrew Wilkie, is that what you're saying? Well well, look, one of the things that uh, Bob Brown, the, the leader of the Greens, did before this election was actually started a discussion and an agreement with all the current crossbenchers that we would start to talk more uh, after this election across both houses so that we can um, keep in touch with each other, know what's going on and, uh, and be even more effective. And that's been um, uh, shepherded under the leadership of Bob Brown and I'm sure that will continue if Andrew Wilkie is elected. Senator, thank you for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thanks, Barry.